Everybody, this is Perch. Uh, what does it mean when we say this writer doesn't get a character? What does that mean? Uh, it's frequently used when a writer comes in to do something dramatic or to you know up in the status quo or give a bold new take or whatever marketing spin you want to put on it. Basically, write the character in a different way from how it's being written before. And this is uh, yeah, it, it's this happens all the time. And the comment of the writer does you know just doesn't get the character is not a new thing. Um, in fact, once upon a time, uh, Marvel and DC actually would publish letters in the back of their comics. It was amazing. Um, every time I see, by the way, the champions and they have uh, they publish tweets, it always is like a, just a kick to the groin to me because it's it really reinforces this idea that. You used to have letters, and granted, a lot of the letters were very handpicked and, in many cases, written by the company themselves. Uh, but you know, you, you'd have fully thought out ideas. And once upon a time, they had actually post negative stuff in the book. I think Vertigo was kind of uh, notable, where you would have letters pages where people would would actually, you know, they would address, you know, very negative, like I won't buy this book anymore. I don't like it. You're taking it in the wrong direction. And yes. This writer doesn't get the character. Um, now, the, the champions doing the tweets is like, OMG, so great. Emoji, happy face, heart, eyes. It's like, okay. The, 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 it's just, it's another, it's a very, very um, on the nose uh, example of how discourse has just gone to hell. But regardless. Um, what does it mean when a writer doesn't get a character? I, I, I get, unfortunately, that phrase has been tossed out so much, I mean, for decades, that it, often just means that whoever's saying that doesn't like the direction the writer has taken the character in. Whether they get the character or not get the character, it's just, you know, hey, you, you know, you took Captain, you know, actually a classic example is when Captain America turned in his shield and said, I can't work for the government anymore, I can't, you know, I, I don't agree with what you're asking me to do, basically, much more involved storyline that, really good, go check it out. There were a number of readers saying, you know, hey, the writer does not get Captain America, doesn't get him. And, uh, and, and I, you know, I think that just objecting to a storyline, uh, some storylines are going to hit, some are not. You take any writer, you know, I'll, I'll use uh, Jeff Johns is often referred to as somebody who can come in and kind of do some great things with comics. And he's written some great comics and every, but all of Jeff Johns storylines are great. Some are terrible. Some are, some are good. Some are bad. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't nail it each time, but I think one thing I, I would say about Johns is that I do think he tries to understand what makes the character tick. Maybe not always successfully, but I do think he makes that attempt. And oftentimes when people say, well, this writer doesn't get the character, you know, they're also kind of saying the writer isn't trying to get the character. Uh, Tanahishi Coates on Captain America is an example of a lot of people, you know, he hates, you know, the guy, he hates white people, he hates America, he hates the character, he doesn't get the character, therefore, you know, it's, it's bad. Um, I, you know, I've read all of the Cap books. I don't like the run. I don't think that the problem is that uh, Tanahishi Coates does not get Captain America. I would argue that Coates gets Captain America probably better than Spencer did. I think Spencer really didn't get that character in the sense of what I mean by my definition. You know, what are the core values? What is the core personality? If you're going to change the character, and I think writers should feel free to change the character, I do think that uh, you know having growth is a good thing. But the growth should come from a platform. It should come from somewhere. The character has to go from one place to another. You know, if Wolverine, who's a murderer and, and uh, you know, and especially in the early days of the Uncanny X-Men, was very violent and, you know, talked with his claws and, and was quick to leap into violence, if he's going to adopt a more peaceful mode to his personality, if he's going to learn inner peace, if he's going to learn, you know, diplomacy over violence, then the struggle should be, you know, him resisting kind of his, his habits, his basic urge, his how he's been as a character. The, the, the storyline should be rooted in that transformation. It should not have the first issue just with Wolverine going, I'm tired of killing people. I'm trying something new. And then he just starts acting just randomly different. That would be not getting the character, in my view. 
I think, uh, you know, Tanahishi Coates, his Captain America run, I don't enjoy. I don't think it's very good. I think it's a lot of spinning wheels. I think it's a lot of, of conversations and very little action. It feels like, in many cases, it's doing a very watered down uh, Brubaker uh, feel. Uh, but it's it's just not. It's I, I I think the story itself is poor. I think the pacing. I think the characters used. I think uh, in some cases. The personalities, I think, uh, weirdly, I think, uh, you know, Coates gets Cap better than he gets a lot of the supporting characters. I think some of the stuff that comes out of Sharon Carter's mouth or Mockingbird or other people who have kind of dipped into the book comes off as, like, as as ridiculously clunky. It comes off very, very awkward. And it just, it feels like, uh, you, know, we're, you know, the writer is basically trying to set up this certain situation. And so it's like, well, here's some people and we'll just have words come out of their mouth and there's no real attempt to understand them. But uh, the idea of Cap from Coates, the, the person who's kind of struggling with, you know, ha- where he fits, kind of this, this feeling of, of uh, you know, still believing in the dream, still believing in America, but coming to the, understand that the, the dream uh, doesn't believe in him. America, you know, with, with whole you know, Spencer's cap is a Nazi and taking over the whole uh, country. I mean, I'll give it to quotes for this. Um, That action has had now, you know, multiple years of consequences. Now, I don't like the story. I don't like the way it's being told. I don't like the journey. But I will say, uh, unlike other writers, he didn't immediately say, meh, uh, all right, moving on. New status quo. We, I know we had the uh, secret empire shook the entire Marvel Universe to its foundation, but uh, we're off doing something else now. Here's Batroc the Leaper. There's, there's, you know, he's attempting to show that you know this was a, a event that basically led to the you know fascist takeover of the entire United States by Hydra, and there are consequences to that. I, I'm on board. I think that's that's good. I, I don't like that things get swept under the rug right away. Uh, but the story itself is poor, in my view. Again, I, I, I know some people like it. The sales do not suggest that many people like it, but that's okay. Uh, you know, if you like it, cool. Um, but the, this idea of not getting the character, the core problem, I think, is when the writer comes in and the writer basically wants to tell a story. They want to tell a story about whatever idea they have. And the character that they're using is somewhat irrelevant. I don't think that's, again, I, I don't care for the, the Coates Captain America run, but I don't think that's the case. I do think Coates is trying to make a story that is responsive to Cap. Not liking this, you know, you could say, you, you could not like the story and still say the writer's attempting to get the character. Different examples of that, I think Avengers is a uh, amazing example of these characters. I, I, there's just, there, there's very little getting these characters between What's going on with Blade, or Cap, or Iron Man, or She-Hulk, or Thor? I, I think these characters th- these characters don't feel rooted in anything. And a lot of the storylines that get kind of rolled out feel very much like you could you could swap the names around. I mean, is the what what has Captain Marvel accomplished in the Avengers that you couldn't just swap over and have Ghost Rider do, or Iron Man, or any of them? The stuff's all very very interchangeable. And I think that's more of an indication of not getting the characters. I think the, the, the phrase, you know, the writer doesn't get the characters is thrown out a little bit too quickly and a little bit too casually when really the statement is, I don't like the story that's being told. I'm not sure why that somehow people are less confident in that statement. I think that's an easier one, frankly, to defend. I don't like this story. Saying somebody doesn't get a character, now you're, you're having to explain why you think somebody thinks a certain way. It's just a much more complicated argument. I think you could keep it simple. I don't like this story. Much, much simpler. Um, I do think, like I said, there's plenty of examples of writers and editors, frankly, who haven't gotten the character, who get put on something and they just they don't, they don't get where they're going. And they, they're too busy, wrapped up in the transformation they want to do with the character. And they forget about the platform, where the character's coming from. I think that's a really important part of storytelling. If you're gonna if you're gonna show a journey, then the journey has to be rooted from somewhere in order for it to count. If it's not, then just random things are happening to characters, and it, it doesn't matter. If you want to tell a story about how Batman suddenly starts using guns, 
you can't just have him walk into the comic and go, you know what? There's a big threat. Joker's got a big mech monster here, and uh, I'm going to need a bazooka to take it down, and I'm just going to start firing at criminals because bazooka gets the job done better than these batarangs. If you just have the comic say that, um, it won't make sense. It won't feel like the character. But if you do something else where you have a long kind of 12-part storyline where his, you know, his very belief system is challenged, you have a better chance of pulling it off. Please, writers, don't, don't have Batman just start using guns. It's a, it's a bad idea, but it just, it's got to come from somewhere. I think that's often what most people are responding to. But maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments below, what do you mean if you say a writer doesn't get the character? Does it, what I say makes sense, or is it all garbage? Do I not get you? I, I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> like and subscribe. Thanks for listening.